Welcome, this is the USI News at One. I'm Joe Tugeneo. And I'm Safi Badana. In our headlines. Black History Month kicks off with a ban. Low turnout at Campus Blood Drive. USIU cafeteria spices up their menu. And a dress code for USIU. Black History Month has been a triumph to the USIU campus. This annual event celebrates black history, black pride, and achievements of black people all over the world. Our reporter Nova Tomani has more on this story. <laughs> It is the month of February, and as you can see, black history is on the roll. Today was opening ceremony in USIU. The event kicked off with a speech by Professor Boyu, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of USIU, who urged the students and staff members to continue supporting the celebration of black history. The highlight of the event was a speech by Isaiah Prunell, Deputy Ambassador of the United States of America. He admonished the students to support good governance, and he went on to remind them that a good government is a democratic one, not one based on tribalism. <laughs> The event ended with a cultural performance by the dancers of the Kenyan National Museum. The Black History celebrations will be taking place throughout the month of February. Several events have been planned right here in USIU. It will close on the 26th of February with the Family Day event. This is Nobada Mone for Campus TV outside the auditorium. A USIU campus blood drive has been hampered by a low turnout of students. According to the organizers, the drive has drawn a larger number of students in the past. For more on this story, we go to a reporter, Jujet Adrian, in the field. Members of the Red Cross USIU chapter are disappointed at the low turnout of students. Chapter president Elsie Opondo blames the low turnout on a lapse of communication from the club. Hosted in conjunction with the Blood Link Foundation, the drive is being held to recruit student donors. University students form a very good, uh, safe population. Uh, who, when they donate blood, we get to use a good chunk of the blood that comes from the, univers from the, from the university population. And Nairobi region as a whole, we need about uh, an average of, uh, of about 120 units of blood a day. Therefore, we have to go out there every single day, especially universities, where we'll be able to get uh, regular safe blood to be able to meet the needs uh, that Nairobi region needs. We caught up with a few students to ask them why they chose to donate blood. It's nice to donate to, uh, to like others, especially because, you know, there's a lot of natural disasters and people are in dire need of especially O negative blood because it's so rare and there aren't that many people who have it. So it's good to at least, you know, you're, you know that your blood is going to be used in a, you know, in a good way. I like helping people and blood is something that's regularly needed in hospitals and everywhere else. Almost every day we hear of accidents and uh, some people require some kinds of blood in the hospitals and... Uh, it will be helpful, actually. With only two days left to go, USIU Red Cross chapter remains optimistic that the number of student donors will improve. Reporting from behind USIU cafeteria, Josette Adrian, Campus TV. This just in. A massive tree has just fallen on USIU's Cafe Latta. Our correspondent Lulu Osman has more on this story. <laughs> An hour ago, a rainstorm hit USIU, causing one of the largest trees to fall. This tree fell right in the middle of Cafe Latte, one of USIU's most popular hangout places. As you can see, it's taken a lot of manpower to clean the debris. Looking at the scene, it's hard to believe that no one was physically hurt, which created a sense of relief within the campus. However, business was interrupted due to the fact that chairs and tables were damaged. All that is left is the cleanup. This is Lul Osman reporting for Campus TV, Cafe Latte. The SAC annual general meeting is being held as we speak. We now go live to our senior reporter, Martin Munene, for more on this story. Okay, uh, thank you, Safi. Thank you so, so much. I'm actually at the auditorium where the SAC annual general meeting is taking place. And with me is one of the SAC officials, Andrew, who is going to be helping us understand what are some of the agendas that are going to be discussed in the meeting. How are you, Andrew? I'm very fine. Thank you. How are you? Thank you. I'm, I'm very fine. So kindly, would you help us understand what are some of the agendas that are going to be discussed in the meeting today? Uh, this is an annual agenda that we have, an AGM, uh, and uh, some of the agendas that we'll have is, uh, one, we'll have our docket reports, 
and uh, we'll, we'll have different SAC officials reporting what they've done over the year, you know, uh, being accountable to the people and uh, getting to know, uh, letting the people know what the money has been done, has been used for, you know. And uh, also we have some pertinent issues that have come up. We have issues uh, to do with uh, the clubs around school. You had the recent case of people being arrested. Yeah, and we also have that other issue of dress code. Yeah, it's a very pertinent issue in uh, USIU, and it's something that we will want to hear what the people want to say. Uh, we also have uh, our very our very own cafeteria over here. We have issues over there. there are some, those are some of the things that we want to discuss in today's GA. Yeah. All right, I thank you so much for your time, and I'll just let you go so that you can go back to the meeting and, you know, get things started and, you know, the discussion going on. We really appreciate you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, all right. So there you have it. Uh, that was uh, Andrew, one of the SAC officials, like I said earlier. And uh, on, you know, somewhere else in this place, we have my colleague, that is Sidi Garama. She's going to be, you know, investigating further, actually finding out how people feel concerning this one issue, which is the dress code. Uh, I think a dress code should not be introduced because of the multicultural aspects that we have in USIU. And... I think that um, it would not be right for the administration to place itself at a situation where students rebel because they feel they are being forced to wear what they do not want. So if the university needs to control the dress code, uh, the administration should clearly describe what is considered decent or not decent. Then the students should be allowed to choose what they should wear within those parameters of what is decent and not what not and what is not decent, yeah. Okay, I think that you say you should not have a dress code because we're from different cultures and uh, different cultures are different ways of expressing themselves. So putting a dress code will probably infringe on some cultures. It would be hard to determine what the dress code should actually be. Okay, uh, I don't think dress code is... Okay, introduction of dress code like Strathmore or other colleges, it is not a good issue. Because when you introduce dress code, you kind of like make, make people be so infringed with the rules. Eh? So, but actually, uh, the students themselves should be able to adjust their dress code, come with something that is appropriate even to, for the public. That is my opinion. Uh, I don't think necessarily that uh, USIU should have a dress code, but uh, I think students should dress decently enough. This is a school after all. That's my opinion. There you have it. The students have spoken. Reporting from the AGM, I'm Sidi Garama. Do you like Nyamachoma? If so, then you're in luck. USIU Cafeteria has just added barbecue to its menu. Oliver Seno has more on this story. I am here at the USIU Cafeteria, the barbecue center. Behind me is a busy chef preparing different barbecue meals. Let's get this and much more from the supervisor. It is basically... Um a combination of SAC and uh, USIU cafeteria who came up with the idea and we tried it out and now it's working. The student response is very good. They are encouraging us to go on and we are, we are planning to maybe introduce more items. We have uh, so much sausage, we have the skewers, we have uh, boras and uh, some more to come. This is it for you. Next time, join in the bite. For Campus TV, I am Olive Asano. And now we go back to the live event at the auditorium. Okay, thank you, Safi. As you can see, I'm inside the auditorium, and behind me, Josh, who is the SAC chair, is addressing the students on the issues as we laid them for you earlier. Back to you. Thank you so much, Martin, for that story. And now we've come to the end of our bulletin. I'm Safi Godana. And I'm Joel Tugeneo. Now you're up to date. Be sure to tune in for the news at 4. Have a great afternoon.